Almighty God, who has made the church your dwelling place, be pleased to manifest yourself to us, your servants who meet this day in your holy place, and inspire our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, most holy and most merciful, we confess before you that we have sinned and come far short of your glory. We have broken your commandments. We have been unthankful for your mercies. We have been unfaithful to the trust committed to our hands. Have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us and graciously forgive all our iniquities. Cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us, but bestow on us your pardon through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty Father, accept us we dedicate ourselves anear to you and enable us by your grace to obey you in all things and to yield our hearts and lives to your service. Grant unto us a pure love for you, a deeper devotion to our Lord and Savior, a truer loyalty to your church, and a stronger desire to proclaim your kinship and to glorify your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns and is worshipped and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. We continue our service with Children's Hymn 2. Momo fra momra me ye ye su aye. Children at home, join us to sing the song. Momo fra momra me ye ye su aye. Na mo fra no a se da be ye no fe. O so a ba fo wo i na ye da. It's so old, dear, my friend, worry, I say, ha. Oh, do ye can answer, na ye can eche. Na da o de ne ye, ma pa de ma ye. Oh, ma ye, ye na no, ni ye e jano. Ni na fo, ni ye so che. So good, sit down. Parents at home and children at home. Today is Parents' Day, a day that set aside by the Presbyterian Church for children to appreciate their parents. And so everything that we are going to do here is in appreciation to our parents. And so we'll sing songs and we see the children reading letters. Saying memory verse, the letters were written by them 
And so parents, sit back and listen to their appreciations. We will continue with our song, God Gave Each of Us Parents. For God gave each of us parents. For God gave each of us parents. For God gave each of us parents. Because He loves us so. Our parents help us grow. Then this is hard to know. For God gave each of us parents. For God gave each of us parents. For God gave each of us parents. Because he loves us so. For God gave each of us family. For God gave each of us family. For God gave each of us family. Because he loves us so. Our family help us grow. And this we ought to know. For God gave each of us family. For God gave each of us family. For God gave each of us family. Because he loves us so. Good. Sit down. Now we take the letters of appreciation from our children to our parents. Dear Mommy and Daddy, to the world, you are Mr. and Mrs. Dankwa. But to my siblings and I, you are our heroes, best friends, our prayer warriors, and our queen and king. Sometimes you are overprotective, but I still love you. Thank you so much, Mom and Dad, for your love, care, food, clothing, and shelter. You introduced us to Christ, and we are so grateful for that, because without God, we can't become what you want us to be in future. Today, I say, Aiko, to you, my parents, and I thank you for making it possible for me to even celebrate this occasion. And I appreciate you as much as you deserve. And as teachers are always told, your reward is in heaven. From your daughter, Mandy. Thank you. Dear mom and dad, I feel so grateful and blessed to have parents like you in my life. In addition, thank you so much for your support, both emotional and financial over the years. I love you. Mom and Dad, please accept my heartfelt thanks for the best gift you could ever have given me, a wonderful education from your daughter, Angel Oyebonsi. Thank you. Dear Mom and Dad, Thank you for always treating me as the best daughter in the world. You are the best parent for sure. Without your love, I have nothing in life. Thank you for being so caring and kind to me when I was a child. You two are the best parents in the world. Everything I am today and everything I may become tomorrow is, is all from the sacrifices you, my parents, made for me. A big thank you to you and all moms and dads in the world. From your daughter, Cherios Ebunsu, thank you. Dear mom and dad, I have allowed so many years to pass without thanking you, but you haven't let a single second pass without loving me unconditionally. I wish everyone had parents like mine, supportive, understanding, and kind. Thank you for giving me the best life possible. From your son, Samuel Date. Thank you. So parents, with or without COVID, your children have appreciated you. You are the best that we have. We say thank you. We continue our service with children's hymn 33. Yeah, who yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah, who yeah, 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 fair. Yeah, now for the yeah, yeah, so yeah, no one be. Oh, do yeah. I hope children at home you are still with us. We are now going to take our memory verses to still appreciate our parents. 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy enjoy long life on earth. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Listen to your father. Without him, you will not exist. When your mother is old, show her your appreciation. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. In the same way, you younger people must submit yourself to your elders. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Amen. Amen. Parents, a teacher too has written something to parents. And so I'm just going to read it as student service teachers to appreciate our teachers, our parents, and our church elders. My parents, gifts from God, and so dear to my heart, from the day I was born, you interpret all my cries and discomfort. You made sure I had everything I needed to keep me healthy and safe. My parents, my number one cheerleaders and support system, you, you encourage me to reach out to the things I never thought were within my reach. My parents, my prayer warriors, my preachers, you pray for me, teach me the word of God, and lead me in the way to Christianity. Mom and dad, I am very grateful to God that we have you as our parents and pray that you live long enough to see God's plans for all your children to manifest. As we celebrate Parents' Day in the church day, we also celebrate you along with every other parent, making great impact in lives of their own children and of others as well. May you all be blessed. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the parent, wonderful parents that you've given to us. We continue to pray that protect our children, our parents, especially in this time of COVID era. We are praying that you protect every family. This we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to pray to commit all children to your hands. Father, protect us. Protect us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
are very grateful to the Lord Almighty for granting us the privilege and the opportunity to share the word of God at this outgate occasion of the commissioning ceremony of ministerial probationers of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. I want to place on record my gratitude to the moderator for allowing me to step in his shoe to share part of his role. Let me now congratulate the commissioners who for three years have gone through training. They have accepted the calling of God and now they are ready to be commissioned into ministry, into the ordained ministry. I want to read an extract from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, 1 to 7. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the very things you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also qualify to teach others. Join me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes in an athletic does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who should be first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying for the Lord will give you insight into all this. The word of God. Shall we share a word of prayer? Thank you so much, God, for the opportunity to share. And I pray that you will empty me completely of self. On this very August occasion, your people are gathered and they are all ears to listen. And I am praying that you will speak through me that all of us will be edified and all of us will be encouraged and all of us will be challenged to go and do exploits for your name to be glorified. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Year after year, institutions of learning turn out into the job market and into society the product of their enterprise. The graduates of all fields Specialists, amateurs, recruits, professionals are sent into the field. Usually, the occasion of such magnitude, the grand finale, as they go out, it's normally celebrated so well with pomp and pageantry. But for the COVID-19, like this whole place would have been guarded, so many persons from families, from loved ones and from communities with Nananum all participating. Now, but, however, despite this pomp and pageantry that characterize such occasions, the desire and the hope of the institution that trained them, their very purpose is that this one will go to fulfill a purpose. They will go to fulfill a destiny. And therefore, the theme for consideration is fulfilling the purpose of your calling. Fulfilling the purpose of your calling. The Apostle Paul had encountered Timothy and his parents in his first missionary journey. And as it is believed, Paul had led them to faith. And Paul had journeyed back. But under the feet of his mother, Timothy's mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, Timothy has been nurtured and is now matured. Paul, on his second missionary journey, gets to the home and the church, that local small church, recommended to the apostle that Timothy will be a ministry companion of the great apostle. And therefore, for the, for the next few years, Timothy had accompanied the apostle Paul and his missionary enterprise. He had learned under the feet 
of the apostles and he is now matured. And as the apostle gradually retreats to the background, he writes a let letters to Timothy. The first one was that Timothy must make sure that he places in responsibility leaders to be able to counter false doctrine that is ongoing, that was going on within the church. And therefore also, he cautioned Timothy, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to the wholesome doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, his puff up with conceit, he knows nothing. He has a morbid craving for controversy and dispute about us, thinking that godliness is a means of gain. And he says that we came into this world with nothing and we will go out of the world with nothing. If we have food and clothing, this will be satisfied. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many foolish and hurtful desires. We plant people into, uh, uh, into, into destruction. And he says, Thou, O man of God, flee this tense and aim at righteousness. In the second letter, he was now talking, he now writes to Timothy. He says that, You then, my son, be strong in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful people who will be able to teach others. But join me in suffering as a soldier of Jesus Christ. But no soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits because his aim is to please the commanding officer. And he says similarly, an athlete does not get a crown until he competes according to the rules of the game. And he says it is a hard-working farmer that must enjoy first the fruit. Now what you needed to understand is that the minister who is going to the field is going as a soldier. And because he's going as a, as a soldier, he must be loyal. Loyal to the commanding officer. And indeed, going out to be loyal to the very God who is commissioning you. Going out to be loyal to the church which, which is commissioning you. And therefore, as you go to many, go into ministry, you must remember the beginning is not difficult, but the end. But the end. And therefore, there is a long journey ahead. You will remember one time the Lord tells Elijah that Elijah, sorry, ne didi, ne no worry. And you must compete according to the rules of the game. Obibiar or compete according to the rules of the game. He must be disciplined. So your boy your home wedding where you may moa. Now you rien kuni be dima. Debi can think can never my mo. Wa can't just a more aqua pano quafu. Where dika crayon won't quarry, Rabesinko we jenny jim. This was a message. Me pesa what tia se se niya was sumano, a yo wura nankasa. Niya was sumano, a ye nyan kupon nankasa. Nan it in a nimpa be du kai, na ye denyara or be mwe ye ye. Se se ya ma ko ne ya tete mu mfie mi ensen efei na wo be ko wiase na bra wo ye adwuma no na onyame bua wo ama wa hu buta ye ntia ofre wo se se wiase aye wo mu no enie ma bebre kire ye ni aye nye na nso buta ye pa wo nyame do ba wiase ye dai ye nyina ye hye ye sofo mi ye ko na nso among the ministers there are the evangelists, there are the teachers, there are the prophets, there are the apostles, all of them are in ministry. And in the Bramu Kokai, the Empire Bonnie said, What do we do? You will focus on him. And if you focus on him, God will direct you, God will lead you, God will prosper your ministry. The Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, on the day that King Uziah died, Isaiah said, I encountered the Lord. At every calling, there is opportunity to do something. There it has to do with timing. At every calling, there is as abilities. God has prepared you. And he has placed a lot of abilities. It has to do with competence. And at any time there is a calling, at any time there is a calling, there is a desire. There is passion. There is passion. 
sa wo wo adwuma mu a sa wo wo wiase mu a sa wo ye na wo ye ba wo ye abrantie na wo susu sa die ne nyame de me ba ya nyame wo bribi ntia odo ba wiase me pa e boni so nyame be bie ye ni ni etimi adubutaye no ho a o nyame e de ye ba and therefore isaiah when he encountered the lord his perspective changed his message changed his testimony changed so we share be mana so we share yesu a when he saw him be sesa won come be sesa wa dance be sesa na wa senka en so be sesa but he, before he guarded these traits he says that you must be strong in the grace of our lord jesus christ mon ko na mon ko she mu ko mu den e wa urade yesu christo mu samri ya covid 19 na mi wiase Somebody, yeah, we say signs are grinding to a halt. Yeah, we say presidents of nation are very confused. They do not know what to do. They have no solution to the COVID-19. Yeah, we say medical signs is grinding to a halt. But Paul, having met the Lord, no sign the bra, no ni Jesus ananti impenbe breno. Paul is say. You are not going to be strong in the academics that you have learned. It is good that we will imbibe the academics and do exploits. But Paul says you must be strong in our Lord Jesus Christ. There was a minister that was preparing to go and share the word of God, preparing his sermon. And his five-year-old daughter was disturbing her literally in this library and the man thought he needed to engage the child so that when the child is occupied he'll be able to have concentration and therefore the map that was hanging in his library he picks the map and tears it into pieces and he gave to the young girl and he says join all this together we are see the map in kaboom. The man's understanding is that it's going to take a long time for this young girl to do that. And she gave the piece to the, that child. And as the child starts putting them together, the man concentrated on his preparation for the delivery of the sermon. Within five minutes, the child comes back and the entire map is put together. His daddy was so surprised. And he says, you five years, how could you put the map together? The world map, the whole world map, you put it together. Where did you learn your geography? Who taught you this? The child looked and smiled. And he says, Daddy, at the back of the world map is the picture of Jesus Christ. And before, because I was able to put the picture of Jesus Christ together, it settled, it, it automatically put the world Together and put the world together. Apostle Paul said, It is not about knowledge. Yes, Adia, and go a doctor, doctor. But when he met him, when he met him, I say, I count everything as lost for the surpassing worth of gaining Christ Jesus, my Lord. And to walk on Yasino, Bra Oko failed, Bra Oko as a missionary, Bra Oko represent here, right? Yes, Bra Oko as an ambassador of the Presbyterian Church. It is not about you, it is about Jesus Christ. If you put Jesus at the center, the world will come together. Say, we are Sifuina, the president of nation, parliaments that will sit, when all institutions, when the security forces, while we meant the economy, while we work so hard, we must put Jesus at the center. And it is our corner of Yesu. Since we're surrounded by so great a crowd of witness, let us lay aside every weight and sin that climbs so closely. Let us look unto Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising all shame, and he seated at the right heart. Can think I didn't come on. Bimpy man of any phone in the money. No, in the yen in him. Bra yen in a susu dem, but tayentin and yamidi ab ya baby asse. Sao betina ni moon. Sao don't bet ton or so. Sao de wakum and yina bedina chia. Bema won't fell for any bed do and him. And Bimpy man won't fell for any bed wow. Or boar for the best shout day. The ministry now where we remain. Ube vium kunim dim. Ube vium kunim dim. That the world will celebrate you one day. May God's name be glorified. And may God's name be praised. Asumjoe nyankopon, enshira na safu. Unyami yeja, oba eni susun kronkrodim. Amen.
moderator say. Please take stand. Please stand. These persons standing before the church have had the call of God upon their lives. They have been affirmed by the church and have been trained at the Trinity Theological Seminary. They are now ready to declare before God and the church their willingness to do for it for Christ and for his kingdom. Moderator, I present them to you so that you take them through their vows. So presented, sir. We continue in prayer. Almighty and eternal God and Father of Spirit and the lover of the souls of all people who has promised to abide in the midst of your people forever. Direct us, O God, by your good spirit, as in the name of your risen and ever-glorious Son, whom you have made head over all things to the church. We set apart these your servants for the service of your gospel. O God, give them such power of understanding and utterance that as they preach the unsearchable riches of Christ, they may be enabled to enlighten the ignorant, to guide the perplexed, to arouse the indifferent, to win those who deny you, and to gather into the fold of your kingdom many who wander in the ways of error and sin. Spare them, O God, if it pleases you, that in due season and rich in grace and experience, they may be ordained to the ministry of your word and sacrament. Teach them, O God, to have steadfast care for their own souls. Multiply in them the gifts of your love. Sanctify and confirm them by your heavenly benediction, that holding fast their profession without wavering, they may finish their course with joy, and finally in your mercy receive full reward in your eternal and glorious kingdom. These things we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mr. Michael Boachi, Mr. Samson Jebi, Mr. Isaac Nyako, Mr. Augustine Ata Odru, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do now appoint you to preach the gospel of the grace of God and to shepherd the flock and to exercise your gifts as probationers for the holy ministry. And we further give you license and authority to administer the sacrament. May the blessing of God who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and rest upon you. The Lord be in your heart and with your lips that you may worthily declare his holy gospel. Amen. Please rise. Michael Boati, Thompson Jebi, Isaac Nyako, Augustine Ata Odro. You went down as minister. Now we confer on you the title reverend. God bless you. Please be many you now. Mr. Charles Opong, Mr. Vincent Kwame Osei, Mr. Eric Owusu Ansa, Mr. Joseph Osei Tutu, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do now appoint you to preach the gospel of the grace of God and to shepherd the flock and to exercise your gifts as probationers for the holy ministry. And we further give you license and authority to administer the sacrament. May the blessing of God, who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and rest upon you. The Lord be in your heart and with your lips, that you may worthily declare his holy gospel. Amen. Please stand. Mr. Charles Opong, Mr. Vincent Kwame Osei, Mr. Eric Ousu Ansa, and Mr. Joseph Osei Tutu, you went down as Mr. We now confer upon you the title Reverend. God bless you. Now the charge. Reverend Michael Boachi, Reverend Samson Jebi, Reverend Isaac Nyako, Reverend Augustine Ata Odro, Reverend Charles Opong, Reverend Vincent Kwame Osei, Reverend Eric Ogusu Ansa, and Reverend Joseph Osei Tutu. You have been appointed to service in God's church, to preach the gospel, to shepherd the flock of Christ, and to be stewards of the mysteries of Christ. 
You must therefore earnestly consider the solemn duties of your high calling and enter his service, not trusting in your own ability and strength, but in him who enables you to do all things. Be careful to preach nothing but the sure and vital word of God, neither adding to it nor taking anything from it, calling all people to repent of their sins and to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. You are further to care for the flock of Christ, to pray for them individually, to pray for them individually, to guide the Christian teaching of children and of the young in home, school, and church, and to strengthen the members in their Christian faith in true godliness and holy and blameless work before Jesus Christ. See to it that you visit them and that you witness both to rich and poor, that you be a messenger of God's grace to the poor and the sick and afflicted, and that you faithfully exalt and lovingly comfort the dying. You have to maintain Christian discipline in the authority of the word of God courageously, not being afraid of people, but of him only, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Be careful, therefore, that you yourself set an example to the flock in word and deed, and in love and in faith, that showing forth the power of the living Christ and his spirit. For this, you must firmly abide in Christ, and diligently and daily meditate on his word, and entrust all your affairs confidently to him in prayer. Thus you will in all difficulties and trials of your office be upheld by him whose power is made perfect in weakness, and who will, on his day, give his commendation to the faithful servant. So go and fulfill your task. Go and preach the word. Go and teach the word. Go and heal the sick. And go in the peace and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. May his name be praised. Amen. Amen. And amen. You are welcome to the ministry. God bless you. Let's give them a big round of applause. Amen.
Now, to God's gracious mercies and protection, we commit all of you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God of Israel lift up the light of his countenance upon all of us and give us his peace, his real shalom, even now and evermore. Amen. Amen.